attending in-person events, even if it's a small meetup with few people, can be very powerful and even business or life changing. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to uh, another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Today, we've got Augustus Cleguise with us today. He is the Amazon Summits guy and the founder of Orange Click, where they create events and also have a YouTube channel. They're the creator of multiple different Amazon events. Um, they also run amzsummits.com, which is uh, an events database. And they've also done over 600 expert sessions with people in the Amazon world. So definitely knows a lot about events and a lot about getting the best out of events, which is what we're really going to be talking about today. So Augustus, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thank you, Todd, for inviting. It's a pleasure to be here and share my opinion about Amazon industry events. I'm more knowledgeable about Amazon private label seller events, but also more in general seller events. Not so much about e-commerce events, but I'm always uh, monitoring this uh, industry, what's happening, especially in US and Europe. I am myself based in Europe and uh, I have things to compare and to share and to give opinion and maybe to advise some things. Very good. What part of Europe are you coming to us from? So I'm originally from Lithuania, but uh, at the moment I'm living already for a few years in Portugal. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've never been to Portugal, but it looks really nice there. You got a lot of really nice beaches, but then you can go to the mountains in the north and it looks yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's very uh, good weather, especially that I'm coming from Eastern Europe where uh, you don't see sun during uh, winter <laughs> and autumn. It's very For gray. Sure. So here we're enjoying sun almost every day. Very cool. Well, why don't you give us uh, just a, a quick background about yourself and you know, how you got into the events world? So originally I was, after I finished studies, I was traveling the world like 20, 15 years ago. I was a digital nomad traveling with USB stick in my pocket when there were no laptops. So I was programming websites and uh, yeah, programming websites in the internet cafes in Latin America and so on and traveling the world with my partner. And then uh, I was looking what else I could do because I was tired of programming for like maybe 10 years or more. And uh, about nine, eight years ago, I saw this opportunity of selling on Amazon and also another business model, which is called virtual summits. So I didn't have money to invest in Amazon business, but I really liked the topic. So I decided to launch a first virtual summit. I think it was the first in Amazon space, more or less, uh, where I interviewed about 25 experts. And in 2016, I launched the first virtual summit and a lot of industry influencers and founders of different softwares and big companies in Amazon industry started to follow me, asking to be on the next show. So I started to create virtual summits uh, for Amazon uh, sellers in the next uh, one, two years until I thought I need a new challenge and I started to create physical events, in-person ones. So the very first one was our flagship event, European Seller Conference in Prague in 2019. And I was so hyped. I thought it we will be uh, Orange Click will be an events company for Amazon sellers. We will do like 20 events in 2021. And then in, of course, like two, 2020, the uh, COVID hit. And then we had to stop our in-person events. I had big plans that year also. And um, our event second year, second edition of European Seller Conference in Prague in 2020, in mid-March, was exactly during when the world was breaking down and uh, we had to adjust to different new regulations in Czech Republic, yeah, according to this panic and a lot of attendees, maybe 30% of attendees didn't come. They bought the tickets that didn't come last minute just because they were afraid. Yeah. So yeah, and... So we made a pause in in-person events, but we continued with the YouTube channel and virtual summits. 
And yeah, we resumed in-person events about one year ago. So now we're also doing a few events a year. We're a small team, so we're not doing many events. But when we do, we try to put the quality events. Yeah, for sure. So have you seen much of a, a change uh, pre-COVID and after in terms of attendance of events? I have a feeling it's um, a similar attendance, like similar hype or similar interest. There was, of mm-hmm. course, like more people were hungry for events about like in 2022, after two or three years break, people wanted to go more. But now I have a feeling I personally don't attend many events, but I always observe pictures of events. Influencers are putting pictures of the of the room, of the audience. And uh, I al- sometimes I even like literally count heads in the room, in the picture to have a feeling how big was the event. And uh, I have a feeling now it's kind of the same like before, like people, you know, going to events, companies are sponsoring them and there is nothing like special. The only thing what is changing maybe who are the sponsors? Like maybe two or three years ago, there were like a lot of these aggregators sponsoring Then yeah. uh, Five years ago, maybe, yeah, there were a lot of, there were not so many, let's say, Amazon uh, advertising agencies. So the space is more changing in uh, this kind of who attends. Now, for example, the more and more problem is that, or challenge for event organizers that there are too many service providers are attending. So sellers are not happy because they get pitched all the time because a lot of maybe sellers who were unsuccessful, they started softwares or services and they go to the same events and now they try to kind of find clients. So in this way, it is changing, I would say, but uh, that COVID, was, these things changed uh, something drastically, I would not say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Things are mostly getting back to normal um, after COVID. So that's a that's a good thing. But so you've done a lot of like virtual events and then uh, also hosted in-person events. Uh, do you have a preference one or the or the other? Or do you see a lot of people having a preference one or the other doing it virtually or in person? So in my experience, so we have done 11 virtual ones and 11 in-person ones. And virtual and in-person, they are completely different business models or com- mm-hmm. even completely different how you create them, what you have to do. And maybe the only thing which is very similar is promoting them on social media. You would put similar posts as an event organizer, but the whole process in organizing the event is a little bit different. And uh, I like in-person events because, uh, of course, in-person attendance is, is smaller because online you it's usually for free. People can register. And so it's a bigger mass is attending. Mm-hmm. But uh, we personally don't receive so much personal feedback. Even if we s- ask for feedback, people, you know, they get an email and they kind of archive the email or delete it. But when we come to the in-person events, we can see with our eyes what we have created. We can see these people who are coming back to our events, meeting their friends whom they met in the previous event. And um, so just in this is kind of different. So it's a, also with online events, you can reach broader audiences like especially online events are useful for people who are just starting out you know because uh, online events are for free and people can watch concentrated content 20 30 sessions in a few days Mm -hmm. and if they are really all in and learning it's uh, a lot of uh, useful information they can get and physical events yeah it's more for people already who can invest in traveling and pay tickets So, yeah, it's completely different, let's say, a little bit different target audience and uh, a little bit different, yeah, the the whole feeling of organizing and attending. Yeah, yeah, for me personally, I I really prefer in person. And like you said, it's, it's very different. Like when you do an online event, it's pretty much all about learning. But when you do an in-person event, it's almost 50-50, if not more networking versus learning. Mm. Because when I go to events, I love to, you know, hey, Augustus, what do you think about this? And talk about different topics and connect with people individually. I've created masterminds from people I've met at events 
and stuff like that. And you can't really replicate that in a virtual event as well. Yeah, it's more difficult unless you have a big um, a traffic to your online event. Uh, we are getting like two, three thousand attendees, but some other industry events might get, you know, 10, 20,000. Then you could create some more networking opportunities with some apps, applications. Yeah. But uh, yeah, with uh, like 1,000, people are very uh, passive in these virtual events. Uh, so even yeah. uh, we tried to bring them to platforms where you can network in the breakout rooms. Out of 1,000, we get like 50 people coming and <laughs> like it's there is no engagement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's definitely the trouble with online events. But uh, so with going, some people might question, you know, why they would want to go to an event. So in your opinion, what are the, the major benefits of actually going to an event? So, yeah, let's talk about in-person event, because I think this is the most powerful. I always say when, when somebody is asking, oh, is it worth to go to this or that event? I can uh, feel that that person have probably never been in events. I think mm -hmm. it's enough to go to one or two events, any industry or any size event, you start feeling the power of, you know, from every event you get some, if not one uh, connection with whom you keep in contact long term, but at least you get an remembering some nice conversation or some giveaway, takeaway you took from the conversation or even some, you know, useful tip you got for your business and it uh, changed uh, your business path dramatically. So I recommend to go at least one or two events just without an expectation to to experience the power. I, I feel like there is a big power because when you meet in the same room with like-minded people, this uh, kind of gives this compound effect and this nice energy and uh, this which kind of uh, creates much nice experience. And they, of course, I'm not talking about the content. Very often, maybe on the stage, you see speakers, which you can see on the YouTube channels or online or webinars. So content, unless it's like very expensive VIP type of events, they are working a lot on they're giving cash prizes for the speakers. So speakers are competing for these $5,000. So they're bringing really much uh, next level content but if it is a um, more average event there is a possibility that it's not that the the people you the experts you're following they will be presenting exactly the same but um, it will be more maybe difficult to pick up those uh, golden nuggets but you are going to these events more for networking even connecting to those speakers speakers have a big network of any kind of you know help you need so if you make friend of with one or two speakers who are on the stage because they are very well connected it can also change uh, the way you do business yeah absolutely and that's one of the fun parts about uh, going to in-person events too because a lot of times you get to connect directly with one of the speakers. You know, you run into them in the hallway or maybe at the after party afterwards or whatever the case may be. And you can talk with them where the virtual events, you know, that probably isn't going to happen so much one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with some of the speakers that are at the event. Yes. So what do you, you mentioned, you know, the, the difference between a cheap event and highly paid events. Let's dive into that a little bit. Like there's a lot of free events, usually virtual ones more so than in-person ones. But then even in person, you've got maybe ones with $100 tickets and ones with $10,000 tickets. So let's kind of walk through that. And is it worth yeah. going to expensive ones or you just go to the cheap ones? Kind of dive into that. So the cheap uh, events are usually, there are also like, let's say, a meetups. There are different types of events. There are meetups, which is maybe doesn't have a proper structure. It's a very short event of two, three hours in the evening. And you meet like maybe between 10 and 50 people. There are maybe more organized events where it's three, four hours with two, three or four speakers. Uh, usually some service provider is organizing it and uh, they inviting and maybe giving snacks. Everything is for free. In the cheap or free events, you will, of course, find more beginners and they're suitable more for those who don't have budget to spend to invest in trips 
and buy tickets for more exclusive events. Mm-hmm. In this kind, of, this kind of events is perfect for people who are starting out. But in these type of events, I also saw serious Amazon sellers coming because I also noticed that the more successful the seller is, the more attentive they are going and listening to every presentation, every webinar, every event they go, because they know there is a chance they will learn something new either from the presentation of the, from the person they will meet. And uh, from my experience, I myself, I lived uh, some years ago in Spain and I was organizing Amazon seller meetups. Because it was not a major city, I, I got like just six, eight people attending this event every two months. But every uh, event, this meetup I organized was so useful for my business. In one meetup, I got a guy from Spain who is sell his Amazon seller, but also selling a merchandise. He prints, you know, logos on different things. So we started ordering from him merch, merch or things for our conferences. So we always ship from Spain to our conferences, to Prague, to Lithuania, to P- Portugal. Next event I did, I found a lady which later started to work with us and uh, rec- She's still recording videos with us, uh, Lisette from Estonia. She's working with with us like for four years. And I met her in my event meetup, which I organized with six people. So you can always find something in uh, low cost events. And uh, more aver- more costly events will bring you just more quality network, I would say, because if it's a conference which costs like $500, $1,000, you should expect people you know, who are running business for some time and they can invest in this and they are coming to with expectance to get some return of investment. Mm-hmm. So they are also eager to talk to other people, to listen to the presentations. And uh, this is, of course, this type of events are more suitable for people who are, well, who can, who have budgets to come. And I saw even beginners have such budgets. And uh, in my events, I even had beginner ladies which are buying VIP tickets. And during the VIP day, which is before the main conference, they got all the answers, all the questions answered. And they said, oh, wow, it's just like VIP day was enough for us. So yeah, you never know what you can get. Yeah, so essentially, when you're paying the $10,000 for a ticket, you should expect that the people you're going to be surrounded by are going to be much higher level than the people you're surrounded by at a free event, at least as a majority, right? You, even at the free events, you're going to have some of those big sellers. One cool example that I had here at the Tampa Bay Meetup Group, which is a free meetup, you know, do a speaker or whatever. And I was there sitting next to this guy talking to him and, you know, trying to help him out with this problem that he was having. And later on in the day, I found out that uh, he was selling Amazon wholesale as well, over $100 million a year, this <laughs> guy. So, you know, you never know who you're going to run into at a free Amazon event. Yeah, of course, uh, to the free meetup, uh, this kind of guy will come because it's happening next to his house or in his town or nearby. I don't think he was traveling from another state. So there are always in every town like really successful business people who are looking for socializing events and they see, oh, there is something happening, I will go there. So this is a chance for you to meet these random people like this. And uh, yeah, when it's more than two, three, four, five thousand dollar ticket event, this is more exclusive. And of course, not only that attendees are the higher quality, more successful or like bigger running bigger businesses Mm -hmm. but also the content is much much more stronger because event organizers have kind of expectation to fulfill that the content shouldn't uh, disappoint the attendees and that's why they usually implement they have like awards for the best speakers and the speakers are really working a lot to bring something unique and hacky style so that uh, the content is very very strong um, it's not so easy to do that in the average event when the event is between $500, $1,000. Yeah, it's kind of covering the cost of the organization. People have to understand that organizing event, it's quite expensive. Uh, I, I heard uh, from one or some organizers in New York that 
just for the dinner they have to pay like two or three hundred dollars uh, which was a big big cost f for us in europe we don't pay so much for, for dinners so yeah when, whenever you see a vip ticket that you have to pay extra five hundred dollars organizers are barely making much out of it because for that price they also have to pay dinners for the speakers for experts they're inviting for free and so on and so on yeah, it's it's a lot harder than it looks. I've organized a, a few events, and I think events is like one of those things where most people at one time is like, "Oh, we should do make our own event or whatever," because it looks so easy on the surface. Yeah. But when you get into it, it is extremely difficult to put it all together, and especially do it profitably. Yeah, That's and uh, it's a good point you brought because uh, I saw in our industry, in Amazon industry, suddenly service providers say, okay, let's do our own events and they mm -hmm. make it big, uh, try to, well, let's say Helium 10's event, you know, sell and scale. They they went so big and I, I don't know their results, but it doesn't look like it was so successful as they wanted, but they invested a lot of money in trying to attract people by bringing Gary V and some other big names from the U.S. Uh, marketing industry, and uh, then they didn't do it again. I don't know the real reasons why they didn't do it again, but I can guess that they it was very unprofitable event. And um, of course, there are m smaller scale events which are happening just for one time. So very often, service providers decide to create event because they think, oh, it's a good idea to bring your new clients to the business and they announce the event as they start working they see that t selling tickets is not so easy they start seeing that the mm -hmm. costs they cannot make the tickets cheap if they don't want it to be uh, you know uh, with a loss if they don't want to lose money and then there is so much stress in mental stress in selling tickets when they are not selling and uh, organizing all the pieces printing banners and and then they realize they, instead of working on business, on acquiring new clients through, I don't know, emails or cold calling, they now spent like two months of their teamwork <laughs> creating event. And they were so tired that they don't even know when there will be the next one and the next one doesn't happen. So that's the reason why, you know, some people, some events pop up maybe they happen one two times and people give up and as you said yeah it's hard to make profitable events even uh, now in europe uh, maybe our brand is known and people know our events but recently we thought to do event in barcelona and we were we spent a few thousand dollars we had to register tax number we had to i had to send two team members to do a scouting for venues in uh, Spain and Barcelona. And then when I saw all the costs and I thought, I'm not sure we will bring people to Barcelona. The hotels are expensive. And mm. and I thought, okay, better we stop here with $3,000 loss than to organize an event and be disappointed that we didn't make any money. So yeah, it's not so easy. Yeah, yeah. Location is important. You want to find a place that's easy for people to travel to, exciting for people to travel to, but also not too expensive that people can't afford to stay there. Actually, events in U.S. might be, I don't have experience organizing there, but might be easier to get more people. And usually, of course, U.S. events are bigger in quantity. Mm -hmm. For example, our biggest event in Prague is Let's say only 200 people, but for us is a lot. In US, 200 people would be kind of smallish event. But US is very big. You have, uh, you know, peop mentally for someone from California to fly to Miami, probably it's much easier than someone from Germany to drive by car to a next country, Czech Republic, where the currency is different, language is different. And yeah. a lot of, you know, Germans, they didn't travel so much outside of their country, even though they are surrounded by many other countries in Europe. So in Europe, we have this kind of problem that every country is living their own bubble. For example, in Germany, there are a lot of Amazon events and they get a lot of um, attendees, 400, 1000. But it's only in German language and nobody knows about these events outside because they don't speak in this language. At Orange Click, we create events in English language and we take a challenge kind of to attract Europeans. To attract, it's easy, but first we need to bring news about our event to them. So it's very 
challenging to bring to different bubbles, bubble yeah. of France, bubble of Germany to spread the word because everybody is following their own influencers. But you in US, I think it can be a little bit easier because, you know, influencer from Miami is probably has followers from California. And uh, yeah, it's all interconnected because it's one language and one country. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Just the having the one language is yes makes it a lot easier that's a big barrier to to overcome obviously if you're hosting an english event and this guy only speaks german he's yeah. probably not going to care about your advertisement so much yeah but uh, also you it can get very expensive if you start advertising in different countries and you know running english language ad uh, plus it's not so easy to target amazon sellers on social media advertising platforms mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's um, yeah, yeah it's pretty expensive. complex. Yeah, they really bid up that price to trying to yeah. advertise to any kind of business related stuff, business people. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you mentioned that you know a lot of events they they pop up and they do once or twice and then they kind of disappear. So when you're looking at events to possibly go to, what should you look for to to see if an event is one that's gonna you know, be around for a long time and maybe you can keep going to it year after year versus the ones that go move out of existence or fade into the background. I personally would look uh, more like if it's, um, uh, if I can afford, if it sounds like price is reasonable and the travel uh, time is reasonable, then I would go no matter, um, you know, how this event looks like just to experience and then you will know. But uh, because sometimes, you know, we also had our the first event and people wanted the second to repeat. So mm -hmm. if new event is popping up in the industry, doesn't mean that it will be a, a bad quality. Even though the, the one I mentioned from Helium 10, it was a big event, I think, three years ago. But um, it was still good. I think people enjoy it. Just maybe uh, they didn't manage to reach as many people as possible to maybe cover the costs. Mm -hmm. But uh, the quality was good. So it doesn't mean that, yeah, if event is popping up, just a new event or the, for the second time, it will be bad quality. It will still be good. But you could also look at the speakers who are coming. So very often, of course, most of conferences, they have an agenda with speakers, the stage. And uh, the speakers basically probably are attracting the audience so if there is no one talking about maybe a wholesale amazon then nobody will come who is interested in wholesale so if you are selling wholesale on amazon maybe don't go to that event but if there are like you know speakers talking about taxes and uh, about you know logistics sourcing and if it's your pain points at the moment in this area in your business then better join this event so mm -hmm. kind of yeah i would evaluate according to the agenda as well because this will define what kind of attendees are attracted also to come so um this but if it is expensive event and now you have to decide okay is it worth to you know invest a big budget and uh, travel a lot maybe it's uh, in some uh, island caribbean island suddenly somebody is putting uh, up a vp event mm -hmm. uh, then uh, well vp events are usually i think quite useful and good so if you have budget you go and if you have time but if it's like let's say average priced between you know, 400 to 1000 dollars i would ask opinions of uh, other people who are attending events uh, I would ask uh, if they have been to find who was in the previous edition, what is their, you know, takeaway, what they, if they could recommend to come or not. Um, maybe if you have a connection to one of the speakers also, I would ask because speakers also travel a lot to different events and they probably can compare and have some kind of opinion. And uh, yeah, that would be my kind of criteria how I would choose if I joined the event or not. Yeah, so it, it sounds like you said that pretty much just go to an event if it looks interesting to you, regardless of if you think it's going to be one that's going to happen over and over because there's you never know what knowledge you're going to gain when you go to these events and who you're going to meet. Yeah, I think that this is the main message. Like, don't, If you're adopting, then probably there is opportunity for you, answer yes. So yeah, if you can just say yes and go. Because, yeah, you you can never predict what can happen. And uh, I, I do have, uh, f for example, some of my friends who are coming to events, 
they they are Amazon sellers and they often look at the list of speakers and for them okay this speaker is on the list I'm going to that event because I need to talk to that guy he might you know answer my questions which I cannot answer like one friend is always searching for funds for his business and whenever he saw a speaker with a, which might do like financial or investment type of things he reads buyers and then for him it's just enough one speaker like this and he would go to that event just with a goal to talk to that guy he doesn't care what he will be presenting so some people are you know have goals like this uh, for one specific person to meet yeah yeah for sure it's very cool to to meet the speakers but I don't think you can underscore the importance as well of the the networking because that's been some of the best parts of events for me and where I meet some of the most interesting people that I make connections with and have those connections long term. I've gotten uh, several referrals from people that I've met at events for clients and stuff like that. So it goes a long way, just the networking itself. Yes, yes, I agree. So when someone goes to an event, once they find one that they're interested in, how can they get the best out of or get the most out of going to the event? Do you have any you know, tips and things that people can do to make sure they're getting their money's worth? I think it's important to be active in socializing and trying to talk to as many people as possible, trying not to be shy if you're normally shy and uh yeah, try to start conversation. It's also important to take notes. So I had a friend who would go to a conference and she would take pictures with each person she talks because, you know, after you talk with even like just eight yeah. people in the day, you forgot like the first person's name. So it's important to exchange cards or take a picture of a name tag, which is hanging on the neck. And uh, if you can, like, you know, go aside and put in your phone, uh, you know, some notes okay i talked to todd he's from uh, uh, florida and he knows about this and that he does this and that so later it will be much easier for you to remember who is who sometimes it's also good to get in contact with organizers you know to come and uh, and talk to them how they do so that you get a feeling what kind of people are behind this event and uh, if you talk in person you get more understanding of why they do this event so you get maybe big appreciation f f if you are in doubt you know if you also if you don't like something in the event go to the organizers and uh, tell them sometimes maybe in the room is too cold and nobody's saying and then it will steep co uh, stay cold or other things which can improve organizers work uh, for the next event and in our events personally we got all the feedback we have like team members we have a google doc shared among team members and whoever talks to somebody heard some feedback from a seller at the dinner or at a random place they later go back go to this google doc and type uh, you know whatever feedback they got uh, let's say somebody said it's too many presentations would be nice more socializing sponsors said they need more time it would be nice longer breaks so all these details we consider very very strongly as organizers for the next event and we're always always adjusting according to that so um yeah so this is how i would suggest for attendees to be active in the events yeah i think that's good for sure to talk to the event organizers telling them what you liked and didn't like i think a lot of times in life we just assume that somebody else will say something if the <laughs> room is cold or something exactly. um and for the most part probably everybody else is thinking like you are oh somebody else will say something so step mm. up and be the person who you know talks about what you liked what you didn't like um, you know, that's one reason I always answer those Amazon seller polls in Seller Central and type in my mm -hmm. comments and everything, you know. A lot of people are afraid to do that for whatever reason, but, you know, if you don't tell them what's going on, what you think, they don't know. Yeah, it takes extra effort, but it's just a few minutes afterwards. Yeah, for sure. So networking, super important. Get out of your shell, force yourself. Um, you know, I'm an introvert. I used to be super shy, but I forced myself to just do some things that don't feel comfortable. It only feels uncomfortable for a short period. 
And odds hmm. are pretty good that that other person, you're at the same conference, you probably have a lot in common and a lot that you can talk about. Um, and then taking notes, like you said, is super important, but even more important, I think, is taking notes and then picking one or two things that you're going to take action on after the event. Because a lot of yeah. times you go home with a notebook full of notes and then mm. you never do anything. So you just got to pick one or two things to actually so, yeah. implement. Yeah, maybe I mentioned making notes of people you meet, but uh, you also, when you listen to presentations, yeah, people also make notes and uh, some of people, some people I know, they come, like say two team members from the same business. They go to all the presentations whenever there are two stages or two rooms of breakouts, they split. And later they make, uh, you know, they compare their own notes and decide what they will be implementing in the business. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's very important as well. But I, I think like about taking notes from presentations, if you are like, you feel it's overwhelmed, very often these events have uh, video recordings. Uh, I don't know how, maybe not all, but yeah, if you see cameras standing, ask, ask organizers if there will be a recording, then you can, you know, don't need to be so much in stress that you will miss some information on the stage. You can always re watch the recordings as well. Yeah, for me too, I really like going around and talking to all of the vendors and the sponsors of the event. I mean, yes, of course, they're trying to sell you something. That's why they're there. But they're also, they also tend to be super knowledgeable in whatever topic or whatever world they're in. And so you can get a lot of good information just by going around to each of the booths and starting up a conversation about uh, their software or whatever they're there for. And actually, it's a very good point. If you have uh, some pain point, which is related to some uh, vendors, sponsors, uh, you know, competence, go and talk to them and get the answers <laughs> to your pain point. You don't need to sign up for them. And uh, very often... They will help you, will, you know, answering from their experience just like this on the spot. Because when you are meeting in person, it's much different conversation than via email or via Zoom calls. And uh, yeah, it's much more real and people are more, more open. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it with software that I actually use. And then I see they're at an event. So I go and talk to them and be like, I'm having this issue, this issue. You guys need to fix this and this mm -hmm. and this. And those people there... Not always, but a lot of times they're salespeople. And so salespeople like to make people happy. <laughs> and so they'll go to their dev team and to the owner and whoever mm. and try to get this resolved for you. And I've seen pretty good results with that. Things happen uh, a lot quicker sometimes that way. Not always, yeah. but sometimes it works out well. Yeah. So, yes, it's a good approach as well. Yeah, yes. All right. So... Do you have any suggestions for some of the, the top events that you would recommend for people here in the U.S. and people in Europe? Yeah, so in the introduction, you mentioned amzsummits.com websites. It's a website uh, we started seven probably years ago. Uh, I had a problem where I live when I lived in Germany and I wanted to visit some event, but I didn't know what's happening. I knew something is happening in France, something in Poland, something in Ukraine, something in Germany, in UK, but there was no kind of uh, gathered information. So this is how mzsummits.com was born. So uh, first, uh, yeah, whenever someone wants to get an overview of what's happening next to them or in the country they are traveling to for business, uh, they can uh, check this page, what's happening. And I personally uh, monitor probably 70, 80, if not 100 events uh, around uh, mostly in US and Europe. And to my opinion, uh, top three events in uh, US would be uh, Billion Dollar Seller Summit. It's uh, organized by Kevin King. Of course, I'm talking more about private label events. I don't know so many about wholesale events. I know there is a one new event which is happening this year for the second time, mzunited.com, MZ United. Uh, so this might be a good wholesale event, but billion dollar seller event, I would say it's good for high tier ticket events. So the prices for tickets are quite high for sellers, four or $5,000. And this event is a lot about not only 
content, but experience. I think half of the time is different tasks and uh, exercises and uh, experiences, which will uh, make you remember this event f- f- for a long time. So this is my n- one of the top three recommendations. Another recommendation is uh, Innovate. It's happening in New York in uh, October, November, in autumn. This is a special event because it is organized by sellers and most of the speakers are big Amazon sellers. So it's a little bit different from any other events in US, in Europe, where very often, even in our events, we organize the speakers on the stage as service providers. But in Innovate event, uh, it is more because this event was born from some uh, high ticket or yeah, some serious mastermind of uh, seven and eight figure sellers. And they inviting the, the, from their network s- speakers to, to share, sellers to share their experiences. When you see sellers on the stage, uh, on the agenda, see sellers presenting, uh, might be that um, not all sellers are very good presenters. So maybe the presentation skills will not always be uh, satisfying <laughs> or good, but the content should be really good or at least you have really good people in the room to network later after the stage uh, performance is over. So yeah, Innovate would be my second uh, recommendation. And the third, I would say is Prosper Show. Everybody probably knows in Amazon space Prosper Show. It looks, yeah, it changed the owners about one or two years ago. I heard, I haven't been in uh, Prosper myself, but from what I'm observing, People had different feelings about the previous Prosper, which was organized. But I know that um, I also yeah, talked to the, had a chance to see you, to talk with Prosper show organizing team because we helped them to promote the event. So I see how they are listening to partner, promotional partners to attendees and trying to make it like really win-win for everyone. And I think in the last uh, Prosper show, they tried to adjust, they did the different pricing. And this event is kind of a go-to, kind of maybe even if, I don't know if the quality of, I heard in the past the quality of presentations were not uh, very high. Maybe in the last event was better, but uh, it's kind of a go-to event to meet like-minded people because it's the only basically big event and consistent event. There are other, there is like SellerCon organized by Amazing Selling Machine uh, Company. Oh, this amazing dot com guys. So seller con looks also like a big event, but it's not consistent. It's like every second year, whenever they have probably time or they yeah, they need the new maybe clients for their course, maybe they organize that. So it's not consistent, so you cannot rely on it. But Prosper Show is consistent and all these three events I mentioned they are kind of consistent. So it's Europe it's uh, US based events. In Europe I would recommend uh Seller Sessions by Danny McMillan in uh, UK, in London, um, because it's also consistent and uh, this guy is trying to bring really, he's very picky in uh, who is real expert, who is not, or in selecting good experts for his uh, event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard on the good feedback from this event. Second event I recommend is uh, Top Dog Summit. It is very similar to Innovate in terms of the concept. Uh, Most of speakers are sellers. Top Dog Summit is uh, organized by Tomer Robinovich. And uh, this is a high ticket event. Uh, Tickets usually cost uh, two, three, four thousand, maybe four thousand if you're coming for the first time. And uh, it's also involves some experiences and um, it has most speakers who are sellers. So yeah it's just because of that uh, i would recommend as well it's also consistent and his idea is to create this event in every time different location different country so it's also kind of and the third event in europe i would recommend was would be ours which is european seller conference it's uh, happening always in prague and um, until now most of the time in march every year and um, the special speciality of this event is that we manage to get almost 100% of attendees coming from abroad. So out of 200 people, we would have like just five or six from Czech Republic. 
coming locally, but everybody else is like far flying in or coming by train or bus, uh, not bus, train or car from uh, Germany, but many people are flying. So we managed to create this event where there is no majority in a nation. Like we get 20 Americans, 20 UK people, maybe 30 Germans and like 10 Romanians, 10 Ukrainians. So it's, you know, 30, 40 different nationalities coming. There is no majority like in most other events, especially European events. In yep. If it's in Germany, it would be like majority of Germans. In UK would be half of UK based people. And uh, yeah, our event is more diverse in, uh, uh, in in geography and we in the recent years we are tougher with uh, who we can speak on the stage so it's yeah a lot of experts want to be on the stage but we're giving a lot of like yeah filters to get on the stage so our speakers are service providers but we try still to work a lot on the content and we have a specific per one person is working with all the speakers about uh, with the, with their presentations and providing feedback what they have to change and remove and so on so this would yeah. be my three recommendations in us and in europe very good yeah that that last one sounds like a lot of fun it's just to meet all the different people from around the world and you know plus uh it can be at a business expense in a lot of cases as well so you're flying to another country meeting people from around the world and you know you get to write it off and stuff so obviously yeah. talk to your accountant i'm not an accountant so don't take my <laughs> advice but yeah. it's a lot of fun so i might have to look into coming to that one sometime as well yeah. anything else augustus that we haven't talked about that we should uh, nothing comes to my mind but uh, i just want to repeat that uh, attending in-person events even it's a small meetup with few people can be very powerful and even business or life changing. So I totally recommend attending not even Amazon industry event, go to, let's say marketing event or, you know, now everybody talks about AI. If next to your house, there is some event about AI, just go and experience and see the, the power. I, I believe that everyone has good experiences uh, in attending in-person events, big or small. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you know, just go. I have never once ran into a mean person at an Amazon event. You know, you're all there to have fun and learn and you're all interested in a similar topic. So it's just, it's a lot easier than a lot of people, you know, get stressed out about it and especially introverted people, obviously. So just go, enjoy, have fun, go to a local one to start out and then graduate from there. And actually one more thought is that uh, sometimes I observe events which are happening because, yeah, I, I, more or less I know what's happening in US and Europe. And I'm thinking, oh, this event doesn't so sound like it was successful. I want to see pictures, maybe they advertised many more people and I see very few in the room or yeah. But then I see, of course, I see these posts on social media. Of course, sometimes they are maybe not true, uh, um, kind of they are like more, I must publish something on social media and share my opinion. But very often people are happy. And uh, then I talk sometimes to even sellers who attended events, but they didn't post on social media, but attended these specific events. They, they say maybe organization was not good, maybe this or that. It's not like when you do event, I it's hard to compare, but they always either bring like one connection or, you know, or some memory. So what they realized that for me, sometimes it looks like maybe not successful event, but it seems like maybe, you know, people appreciate the event itself and they forgive any organizational problems or inconsistencies and so on. So that's, I think that the power of like this experiencing things in person. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. The, the smaller, more intimate ones for me have been some of the funnest because you just mm -hmm. have a better opportunity to connect with people at the smaller ones than you do at the super big ones that have thousands of people at them. Yes. yes. All right. Awesome. Augustus, where can people uh, connect with you at? Uh, the best is if you just uh, type orange click uh, in the internet search or YouTube channel, 
Click is spelled K L I K K K L I K. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit like uh, playing with words with my surname Kligis and uh, the word click. Uh, when you shop on Amazon, you click the mouse. So that's why it's called Orange Click. And um, yeah, you will f- find us on internet doing interviews and also announcing new events. And if you are you know, want to have an overview of events which are happening in US and Europe, just go to mzsummits.com. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've got 874 videos on your YouTube channel alone with almost 20,000 subscribers. So mm-hmm. it looks like a lot of really good content. So definitely I would recommend people checking it out. So Augustus, I appreciate you coming on the show. This has been great. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, cool. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.